On today's show, we're talking about a lot of super studs, and of course, there's always some super duds that we got to go over. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now, leave us some comments about who carried you to victory this week, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. <laughs> I couldn't even make it through the intro. Jason just starts looking into my soul and cackling. Yeah, because we nasty today. This is a nasty boy show. The nasty boys are here. Andy is out. I'm in the captain's chair. That means Jay Grizz, Cardboard Bear, Extraordinaire, X, a.k.a. J. Riz. He's going to be risen up the set today. Holding it down. He had a, he had a pretty good day. I Did mean, he? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, he's a big Justin Fields guy. Yeah, okay. Justin Fields was great. Uh, great for fantasy. Mm -hmm. Pretty darn good as a quarterback. Uh, the very end of the game, it went well for Bears fans. I, yes. I don't know if they're happy. Like, I had a Bears fan text me saying, should I be happy? <laughs> And I told them, yes, yeah, yes, you should be happy. But welcome into the podcast. Monday, October 2nd, spooky season has begun. Ooh, see, to me, the holiday season has begun. Oh, okay. I was driving you... my kids to school today, and they asked me, they go, did the holiday season begin now? I was like, yes, it has. Cause, wait, so you don't define this as spooky season? It's just its overall holiday it's season? The it's the beginning of the holidays. October 1st kicks off the holiday months. See, I go spooky season into Christmas season. That's fine. That's fine. Due we to, can, uh, we can not recognize celebrate them. our differences, Mike. <laughs> we can be thankful for them. Uh, a lot to be thankful for over this uh, special NFL weekend. We had a lot of points going in there. A couple quick house cleaning tidbits here foot clan giveaway we are giving away we are still giving away a signed christian mccaffrey jersey value went up yeah <laughs> that guy that guy oh man i like that guy <laughs> he's so nice to me <laughs> so good uh but foot clan giveaway.com bunch of uh things you can do to help support the show they are all completely free follow us on socials instagram.com slash fantasy footballers or on x at the ff ballers I am at FF Hitman at Jason FFL, or you can follow Andy at Andy Holloway. Lot to talk about, but first we must, Jason. We yes. must. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'll start it off with my Jason. He might be my best friend. I'm so sorry, Christian McGoatfree. <laughs> oh yes. What is? How about Nakua Matata? It means no losses. <laughs> or hip hip hooray, Jay Brown. Unless he played against them. And yeah. Nico Ballins. Justin Fields of Dreams. And we finally figured out how to say oh, this guy's goodness. name. It is Devon A. Champ. Because he's a champion. That guy. I mean, ridiculous things are happening. And also some bad things. Mm, P.U. is that stank dealt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jordan Sadison. I did not like that one. Mm -mm. TJ Hockaloogie. We're back to back Vikings. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Joe Broken. Yeah, there's a lot to He's, talk about. That dude's broken right now. Uh, oh. Chris No Lave. And of course, Raheem Most Turd. That uh, was a that was a piece of poop. If you didn't yeah, catch no. that in the verbiage, it was a most turd. Yeah. Uh, multiple fumbles. Yeah, he had a he had himself a very poor game, and he was the number one running back in all of fantasy coming into this week. So, very disappointing when you go from uh, greatness to really just a, a de destructive performance. Yeah. It was a disaster. Meanwhile, A Chan <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, he's got the. Got the beat to make your booty go clap? <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Adam Schefter reports the Cardinals are not 
expected to activate Kyler Murray off the pup when he's eligible, which is this week. So they will not be opening up his 21-day practice window. Yeah, and, th- and this is something we, we brought this up on some show a week or two ago. I, I don't so remember many shows. exactly which one, but um, again, we knew this wasn't going to happen, that they weren't going to activate him immediately. Additionally, we know that when they activate him, he will not be there that week. They want him at practice for a couple of weeks. They might use all 21 days in the 21-day window, uh, so don't plan on having Kyler immediately. This is the time, though, where we're going to know which one of these – You know, in the preseason, all these players get put on the pup, and you go, well, they're going to miss four games, and so we'll have them in week five. That is only true of the players who are going to be activated immediately when their window is of eligibility is open, which is right now. So we have two more pieces of news. Yes, the Colts will open the 21 practice day window for Jonathan Taylor this week. And last week, Sean McVay confirmed Cooper Cup will practice this week, meaning that they're going to open up his 21-day practice window. And then some – like they just – you know how news sources – or not news sources, I'm sorry, like businesses and companies – they if they have bad news they wait till like Friday. Oh yeah, and then they just Hide it. they just dump it in the afternoon because it's often overlooked or just it doesn't get the full week cycle. Uh, not related to that. Tyler Higby agreed to a three year, twenty seven million dollar extension. What? Cool. I mean, you get paid, man. You usually do that in week four mid season while dealing with an Achilles hey. injury. It's just as expected. But um, Cooper Cup, I fully believe he plays. Week five, like I, I think Ooh, he is, week five. I do. I think he will be active and playing. Well, fantasy managers are crossing their fingers. Uh, other news during the weekend: quarterback Justin Herbert, he suffered a fractured finger on his left non-throwing hand. He does have a week five bye. I mean, he went right back into the game. Yeah, he won't it's, miss any time. He didn't play as well once it happened. I, I don't know if that was just what because he has a bro- bro- broken part of his one of his hands. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't good. <laughs> But, it, you know, that shouldn't affect your ability to throw the ball with your but right it, hand. It affects your ability to do anything. Sure. I, I, the nice thing is... It, you understand, like, just because he's not throwing with that hand, it hurts tremendously. Re, uh, the broken a, finger? Yeah. He is He is really, really tough. And that was uh, part of the... Sure. Uh, you we know, saw the, that last year. Yeah, I mean, he played through broken ribs. The, the timing couldn't be better because he already had a good fantasy day you know, in their victory, and then they have the bye week coming up, so you're not going to miss any time. He'll be good to go when he comes back. Uh, it's not really newsworthy, but Brooks is bringing it up, so it, it's it's just fun fodder to talk about. Austin Eckler, sir, great yeah. fan, great friend of the show, yeah, great friend of fantasy football. Mm-hmm. Does he not know what how social media works? He more than anyone knows he, how he social got, media works. He he tried to pull one over on everybody. He posted a a nice picture of him like entering this the the field or something like that. It was see it was very much implied that I'm going to be back this week. I don't know his post. To me when I looked at it it was him standing on the sideline. And so I was like, <laughs> "Oh, okay, he's he's saying he's telling people he's on the sideline." But Mama Bear she posted like she like week two, you know, game two. It's it's on like like he was gonna be active. So mm-hmm. whatever. He, Come he on, missed. we we knew he was probably going to miss because of the bye week. He'll be back, but uh, it's unfortunate. We, it, as an Eckler manager, it has you, you really got, you, d- been frustrating to have such a great week one performance, mm-hmm. and then I don't see him till week five. <laughs> he just he needed some needed to charge back up. Mike Evans of the Bucks, he exited the game with a hamstring injury. They do have the bye week next week, so that's perfectly timed out. Bengals T. Higgins, he left early with a rib fracture. They're saying he will miss some time. Uh, rib injuries often, like the, the player can put on the flak jacket and play through it, but it always, I mean, it always affects. If you've ever bruised a rib, mm-hmm. you, yeah, oh man, it you can't do anything. You, yeah, and, and this is a wide receiver who's going to be going across the yeah. middle of the field. Like you're telling me, you hear the footsteps coming while you've got broken ribs, and you're not you're not a little worried about catching yes. that ball. Oh, I'm super worried. Javante Williams of the Broncos. He exited early. It was I think like like the top of the second quarter. A hip flexor injury. He did not return, so that will be 
a very interesting piece of news as we move, look forward to the waiver wire. Devontae Adams, he hurt like his arm, I guess. His it shoulder. Turned, it turned out to be his shoulder right before the half. It, he went to the locker room, but he came back, and then he caught some more passes. Probably got an injection, and uh, we'll do the same before next week. Kenny Pickett, Pittsburgh Steelers, he left with a knee, a left knee injury. It is believed to be a sprained MCL, not season-ending, but he could miss some time uh, with teammate Pat Fryermuth. The Muth exited with a hamstring injury, and Jawan Johnson of the Saints, he exited with a calf injury. Is there any other news, Jay, did that any no, hidden I, news that we that we saw over the weekend? No hidden news that I know. I think we're still waiting on an MRI to confirm with Kenny Pickett. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe this it, ha has already happened, but uh, it will. Kenny Pickett will not be playing next week. It'll be Mitchell Trubisky. Yes, uh, that's probably what I think as well. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. The studs were studly this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, they were. The The quarterback position really went pretty nuclear. Josh Stallion. Well, chillo. Uh, we got 21 for 320 and four. Four passing tutties. Oh, wait. Four for 17 without rushing tutty. Jason's silence says yeah, he played a, against Josh yeah, Stallion. I, well, there's going to be a recurring theme through the stud muffins <laughs> um, on today's episode. Usually the stud muffins is like the fun time. Uh -huh. Not for me. Not when – like I had, I had such a great week in fantasy. I yeah, your guys in, are in here too. In most of my leagues and in the league of record, the really the only thing that matters, um, I, I had a great game. I scored the second most points. <laughs> But it don't matter when you play against first. And, of course, first place had Josh Allen. He went bonkers. Um, you know, it was it, it was a real awesome statement that the Bills made against the undefeated and seemingly unbeatable Dolphins. They went and smooshed them. They, they laid the they law did. down, and they said, we are, we are the leaders of this division. Wait your turn. Yeah, they heard the chatter as the – the Dolphins hive were they were they were getting pretty, <laughs> they were starting to get pretty they were, loud. They were squeaky, and turns out a buffalo uh, stronger than a dolphin. I guess that's a fact. I mean, depending on your your arena, fair. Like, like you <laughs> put a, put a buffalo in the water. I, I think the dolphin's gonna win. Yeah, probably. Don't dolphins like kill sharks? They kill yeah, and and whales and stuff. Yeah, they crazy. can be mean. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Anthony Richardson. There you go. It. <laughs> I wanted to put. I wanted to put some kind of Anthony Filthy Richardson in the in the puns, um, because it was it was it was a little filthy. Eleven for twenty five. Eleven completed. Eleven completed passes. What a stud muffin! And except it was for two hundred yards and two passing touchdowns, and then ten for fifty six with a rushing touchdown on the ground. In four point leagues, he is the quarterback two in points per game. He gets to take on Tennessee and Jacksonville the next two weeks. Hoo ha! Hey, you gotta you gotta keep him in your lineups. Um, he was a great DFS play, and not only was he good, but it, he came back in a game where they were getting decimated. I think it was like yeah, it was twenty three to nothing or so, something like so. that, where they were just getting um, absolutely obliterated on both sides of the ball. And the second half rolls around, he steps up make some good plays. They come back. They tie the game. They go into overtime uh, where Puka got the game-winning touchdown and the Rams still were victorious. But, it, like, it's nice to see not just good performance but resiliency. Now, that that line is actually pretty similar to Lamar Jackson. He was 15 for 19 with 186, two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns as well. But they were taken on the Cleveland Browns. The – the Browns' defense, I, I mean, I guess they was just they were up against it so much because of the uh, because they didn't did, have yeah, an offense. They didn't have an offense. Deshaun Watson was a late scratch, and the rookie was not ready to play. I mean, I I I, I feel for him as well because they were saying, 
he he didn't even know he was going to start until like right before the game happened. I, I mean, I know you can go through the week like the starters is banged up. You're not getting you're getting some reps in practice, but then imagine you you like I'm sure Watson's telling him like no I'm going to be playing don't worry don't yeah. worry and then all of a sudden like hey go play against the Ravens you're like what? yeah well uh, it, no and, thank you and I I think a lot of people might you know be either inflating the Ravens <clears throat> the Ravens offense right or saying oh the Browns defense isn't as good as we thought I don't believe either of those are the correct takeaway from that game the the Cleveland offense with the rookie quarterback could not stay on the field yes and so their defense just collapsed uh justin fields he's in this list so that of, cool, of course he ran for 150 yards on the ground right no but at least 50 right yeah nope Wait. only four for 25 on the ground and with Justin, a, how many rushing touchdowns with none well, so why is he in studs 28 completed passes 335 yards four passing tutties what <laughs> yeah what? Yes, that is the correct response. What? Um, so speaking of defenses being good or bad, yeah, the Denver Broncos. So here, this is what's going to be so funny. Oh, Do you know my. their matchup next week? Do you remember it? The Broncos. Yeah, who they play? Because it, it's a real. Is it the Jets? <laughs> yes. Oh yes, my it's, gosh! It's a push comes to shove situation of like, okay, can you start Zach Wilson, dude? Wilson. Yeah, he didn't look. Wilson looked okay. He yesterday. was not all of the problem. Yes, yeah, that's a fair way to put it. I Which, mean, good for you, yeah. Zach. I mean, look, I he made some really good throws. He, he made some Zach Wilson throws, but mm -hmm. overall, I mean, that you had to feel if you're Coach Solly, you have to feel like, yeah. See, I told you, I told you, we've been sticking with our guy. Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, you, you, you want him to do well. Obviously, he's yes. your quarterback. You're hoping that he succeeds, and he played uh, well. So th the point, though, is that Denver's defense is a uh, trash. Okay, so back to Justin Fields then. 335 passing yards, four passing touchdowns. Did Chicago figure it out, no. or is Denver just that bad? Denver's just that bad. Uh, Chicago did not figure it out. Justin Fields is not going to go and throw for 300 again against Washington or even the next week against Minnesota in a plus matchup. That being said, I you know I was saying personally I would have started Justin Fields this last week. I will keep starting him. Um, for fantasy purposes, he, he is, I think, more often than not going to put up large performances. I know it's hard when it was back-to-back-to-back poor you know starts but the nice thing at the very least even if they haven't figured it out and unlocked how you know he's just a great passer all of a sudden there is a confidence thing right like quarterbacks confidence is yeah, everything yes. and so yes. coming off of a a really good performance where you complete 80 percent of your passes you're dropping dimes um th that's got to be good to go into the next game have some momentum so washington is up next for justin fields but then Minnesota, the Raiders, both of those games are at home, and then on the road against the Chargers. Yeah, it's going to be a good uh, field to set weeks. up here. Yeah. So, if are you trading him away? I no, guess that, no. I guess that's the the big question I, is. I, I, okay. I would not be trading Justin Fields away. I think at the end of the year, and the, at the end of the year, Justin Fields is probably a top six quarterback. Maybe it maybe it's top eight because he started the year so poorly, but. That's my view of Justin Fields. I haven't wavered um, while he was having poor performances. Jalen Hurts had himself a fine game over 300 passing yards, two passing touchdowns. He gets to take on the Rams next week. Joshua Dobbs. Hey. Some, both, both of us <laughs> just opened our hands like, oh, oh, okay. all right, okay. I mean, he is running a good amount, 12 for 48 on the ground. That's a free touchdown in four-point scoring formats. And then two sixty five and two through the air. Uh, the, the, like this and this was against the San Francisco 49ers. It was if, he, if you missed the game, it was so bizarre because it felt like the Cardinals were playing pretty good. They were at the end of that game or towards the end, they were a two point conversion away from having it be a three point game. Like they were actually in it. Now then the 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 very end of the game it ended up working out for the 49ers to even cover the spread. So you might look at the box score and say, oh, the Cardinals sucked. That wasn't the the process. And what's great about this 
is what Joshua Dobbs has done is show that you can have a little bit more confidence in the receiving option in Hollywood Brown. Michael Wilson had a monstrous he game. Did. And so this is a team where the wide receivers have kind of been waiting for Kyler to get back to have confidence. You know, you can throw these guys in in a pinch, but they look competent, which is shocking. Justin Herbert had himself a big game despite the broken finger, mostly on the back of two rushing touchdowns. He goes on to the bye week, but and he's on pace for 43 combined touchdowns. Jason, you your bold prediction was 50, so you feeling like an idiot? <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> he's the quarterback one, and he's on pace for over 40 touchdowns. So I feel like I feel I feel this is a, a good enough start to get there. Fair enough. Baker Mayfield taking on the New Orleans Saints, 246 and 3, 8 for 31 on the ground. And the just, dude, the Bucks, the Bucks on the road beat down the Saints. I saw a submission for uh Monday Pundit of Baker may be worth a roster spot. <laughs> So, okay. I mean, it seems yeah. so. And uh, obviously, they're going to go Maybe. on a bye week right now, but they come back with the Detroit Lions. Uh, That's not the worst matchup. Uh, you you want to see Mike Evans active for that game. Sure. Um, but it was also nice to see that in Mike Evans' replacement when he w went out, Chris Godwin looked good. He didn't, you know, he, uh, he can be the guy. He can be the one. I don't know if Derek Carr is – is Derek Carr in our – pooped his pants? Oh, he needs to be. Make sure he's there. Um, yeah, I don't care what his, I don't care if he ended up having twenty rushing touchdowns that game. That dude uh, sucked. All right, put him in. So then we'll move the discussion of of Derek Carr over to there. Russell Wilson, Andy, start of the week. He came through with over two hundred passing yards, three passing touchdowns. He does take on the Jets next week. Yeah, no thank you. Yikes! And then C.J. Stroud. I think he's yeah, baby. He's just gonna be a superstar. He. Kyle, are you on the microphone? I'm here. Yeah, the, the Stroud boys, we're looking pretty good supporting our guy over Bryce. How's that? Kyle, how you feeling? How you feeling about that? I feel that? amazing. Yeah, Great. that's right. All that <laughs> nonsense of the Texans aren't even going to take him. Get that crap out of here. They did the right thing, and they are looking set up. I mean, they don't have a first-round pick next year, but they are a if I'm a Houston Texans fan right now, oh, you got to be! So I am happy. feeling so good. I mean, genuinely, right now, C.J. Stroud versus Deshaun Watson. C.J. Stroud is playing actively better. Three hundred passing yards, two passing touchdowns. I mean, that's already his second three hundred yard game this season. So, fifty percent of his games he throws for three hundred plus yards. Second they, most passing yards by a player in his first four NFL games in history. They dismantled the Jaguars last week. They destroyed the Pittsburgh Steelers this week, 30-6. to I mean, they're doing some good work down there. Yeah. Doing some good work with C.J. Stroud. We're going to get into the, uh, into the running back studs of the week, but we got to take a quick break. Christian McGoat free, Jason. Mm, man, that dude. He's he's goating. So, in the morning, I declared uh, when we were all together that I thought B. John Robinson was the best running back in the <laughs> NFL. Yes. And early into the 49ers game, I said, I think B. John Robinson is the second best running back in the NFL because <laughs> I don't understand why Christian McCaffrey is so good. Like, I just don't understand it. I don't get how no one can ever tackle him. He always makes the right read. He always keeps his balance. He's just like this. It, it's just always, it's almost like decision making. I don't even know how he. There's a lot of that. Yes. It's not <laughs> fair. It's not fair. Every time he touches the ball, it's like, oh, there's another eight yards. It was 20 for over 103 rushing touchdowns, eight targets, seven for 71 with a receiving touchdown. And the Shanahanigans, they they got us at the end of the game. They they were trying to get Juice a uh -huh. touchdown, which I respect it. I yeah, mean, get your full back in there. Like get yeah the 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 unheralded position. Get him some love. 
He did not make it in. So then they let Purdy rush. I don't, it that was, was a, stupid. You that give, was a strange give decision. Give McCaffrey his fifth touchdown of the game. Thank you. So, it, look, for the record, it was not greedy. Mike loving his Christian McCaffrey points. Jason's on board of saying give him his fifth touchdown. If you have an opportunity, if you've got a player with four touchdowns in a game and you're on the goal line, you've got, like, just give the man a special day. It's also, I mean, it's also a little weird. Not not that you quarterbacks always get hurt, but it's just you've seen quarterback sneaks go awry. Not like, only that. So, like, at the end of a game when it's – I mean, the game is done. Like, for, for there's yeah. still time on the clock, but I'm saying the Cardinals not coming back. I don't know. Interesting decision. Interesting I also decision. think if I'm the coach there, forget giving the guy the fifth, like charity or making it special. How about just call your best play? Because you know what your best play was all day? Just give the ball to Christian McCaffrey. It was. So he's automatic. We don't need to talk about him other than to just say he is the new LaDainian Tomlinson. Yep. He plays the Dallas Cowboys and then the Cleveland Browns. Don't care. So what? Who cares? David Montgomery from the Thursday night matchup from missing games with, a, I think, the thigh bruise to 32 carries, 121 yards, three rushing touchdowns. Uh, it was it was a great game for him. Kyron Williams continues to be the absolute best late round pick or the best waiver wire pickup. I mean, I'm I'm including Puka in that list to find a running back who was doing what Kyron Williams does. Like this is you would have drafted this at the this performance at the 102. It is incredibly only you would have only drafted McCaffrey's numbers over Kyron right now. It, it's incredibly impressive that the potential two best waiver wire pickups are both Rams. You know, <laughs> nobody went into sure. draft season yeah, yeah, yeah. being like, "Oh, you've got to get Kyron, you've got to get Puka." I mean, I liked both players. They were they were last round dart throws, but you know, they they weren't people that uh, you know, their their average draft position was undrafted. And so this role, when when we were kind of pro Cam Akers, it was because the role of the lead workhorse back for Sean McVay is very valuable. So you go, okay, he has it on lockdown. What's he going to be going forward rest of season? It's going to be a top 10 running back. Yeah, he's looked great. He does face the Philadelphia Eagles next, so that'll be a bit tougher for him. Mm, Devon... Here. Well, here's a guy that might – I mean, if you're talking waiver wire pickup of the year – Yeah, no, that's fair. That's he fair. could make a run for he his could. money. Devon A. Chan, only eight carries, but that's all he needed to get 101 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. I believe his two first touches of the game were both for touchdowns. Five targets, three for 19. The snaps went up. The routes run went up. I do – I will – put some pause and to say Mostert fumbled two times in this past week. Could that have something to do with the snaps of HN getting, you know, more involved in the game? It could. Could or could it just be that HN is just so dominant that you gotta get him on the field? I think it's a, a combination of both. So it wouldn't surprise me to see the snaps flip back to being Mostert in yeah. Mostert's favor. Not that I'm I'm not saying I'm benching HN or anything like that, oh. but just just saying that the I'm not looking at the snaps going from 42 to 60 percent. Going here, we did it. We did the HN's the guy. Yeah, I'm I mean, not ready to do that. I I don't I don't think he's ever going to be the guy who gets what like Kyron is getting, where he's going to be on the field 70 to 90 percent of snaps and touching the ball 25 times. It's not built for that. Um, but if you watched the the game flow, I I don't think it was the fumbles that really. I I don't I don't think McDaniel benched Mostert in a show of, hey, you're not holding on to the ball. So, you know, it was 60% snaps for Achan and 43% snaps for Mostert. Mostert's older and has a, a long injury history and is very explosive. I think I think they probably would prefer for this to be about a 50-50. Sure. Uh, although they're going to get more players back when Ahmed is healthier, when Jeff Wilson comes back. I mean – uh, I, I think I saw uh, an interview where McDaniel said he wants to use five running backs. Don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that. Josh Jacobs, welcome back. 17 for 58. That's not great. But he did get the rushing touchdown and then eight receptions for 81 yards and he started the week. I mean, that's Josh Jacobs' formula right now is simply workload, gets the Green Bay Packers next week, but he's – 
he as as of right now, he is losing the pay me. <laughs> Uh, the mm. give me the money argument that he had with the Raiders of the Raiders betting that last year was more of a holy crap outlier. Congratulations on doing that. We don't think you're going to be able to do that again. And so far he has not been able to do that again. He's been, I mean, he's holding up for fantasy football purposes, but you, that those are not great rushing numbers for someone who's trying to break the bank. Isaiah Pacheco. Goodness gracious, 20 for 115 in a rushing touchdown. It was, Zach Wilson played well. Mahomes didn't play. Mahomes had a bad game. Yeah, Mahomes did not play great. And it was a strange offensive decision here by Andy Reid because usually if Mahomes isn't playing great, they go, why don't you go out there and throw some more? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. But it was like 20 carries. Has Pacheco ever had 20 carries? I think. I think he has actually, but uh, how many times? Well, I don't know his exact workload box score by heart. Kyle, but Kyle, look that up for me. If you look at his opportunity and share through the first four weeks, Pacheco's arrow is pointing up: twenty percent in week one, twenty-three percent in week two, thirty-three percent in week three, up to thirty-six percent in week four, which was a career high. That's the percentage of team rushes and targets for the position. Which we need to remember: you no, know, Pacheco missed essentially all of the the off season and training camp uh, dealing with his own injury situation. So him getting slowly ramped up, it does make sense. Uh, the other he two had 22 carries in week 12 last year. That is the only other time he's had 20 carries. I mean, it's just, it's, I'm not, I'm not banking on 20 plus carries from Pacheco every week, but he is really starting to dominate here. Just four opportunities each for Clyde and McKinnon. Um, it's it's Pacheco's show. Khalil Herbert. There's, uh, there's hey. that Broncos D. <laughs> hey, yeah. Ooh, yes. Yes. 18 for 103, four, uh, five targets for four for 19 with a touchdown. I was going to bring up the insider reports of Roshan Johnson pushing this to a 50-50. Not this week. Mm -mm. Not, not even close. 78% of snaps for Khalil Herbert. Looked good. Although he... He was stumbling all the time. It was like he would get to the open field like, and then fall over. Like, keep your feet. Khalil Herbert is – he's a momentum guy. And sometimes the momentum – like when you're running downhill. He's running too fast. You 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 trip over your feet. Yeah. I mean, it did look like he was doing the thing where, you know, when you start to stumble and you're running – like he was running so yeah. forward <laughs> just for extra extra momentum. Derrick Henry because – Oh, the, yes, of here, course. Here the we king. are. Here we are, of course. Uh, because in the matchup against the uh, Super Bowl contending Cincinnati Bengals, super positive game script for the Tennessee Titans, of course, turned into 22 carries, 122 rushing yards, a rushing touchdown. It was a great performance. Obviously, this was a, a trade away candidate from from my mouth this last week, and and I, you're still going to have big monstrous games. One of the arguments of doing it that week was. Derrick Henry is so much more valuable and gets the 20-plus carries in games where their team wins. Obviously, at that point, the Titans look like they they might not win very many games. Tannehill has looked decrepit, and they're playing against a Super Bowl contending. Alleged. An alleged Super Bowl. Previously alleged <laughs> Super Bowl contending. They're not making the playoffs. Like, the Bengals absolutely are not making the playoffs. I'll, I, I will be blown away if they do. Um, the the, the bank, I mean – the Titans, it was 27-3. to They mopped the floor with the Bengals. The Bengals' offense is broken right now with Joe Barokin. And, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, what, two weeks in a row where they've scored three points? Yeah, Kyle, what was the, the, the Bengals stat you shared that they – I think he was saying they have three offensive touchdowns? Uh, pull that up for me, Kyle, because it's, it is truly an embarrassing thing was what is happening right now to the Bengals. Bijan Robinson, he had himself a a fine game. He's getting all like the snaps have gone up. Tyler Algier is an afterthought at this point for the Atlanta Falcons, much like uh, Kyle Pitts is an afterthought for them as they turn to Janu Smith. Well, when you've got Janu Smith, yeah, I mean you got to go on. Got to go in on Janu Smith. Yeah, Bijan is absolutely phenomenal. It is very very rare for a player to be able to be a top player at their position in a week without a touchdown really the only guy that's done that regularly 
if you can go back 13 games ago, uh, was McGoat free. McGoat free. Christian McCaffrey is so involved he can have enough rushing yards, enough receptions and receiving yards where he could have a phenomenal game uh, without a without a single touchdown. Th this is Bijan's method because I don't think the Falcons are going to score a ton, uh, but he will get the touchdowns that that they score uh, more often than not. So here it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was a tweet from Field Yates. The Bengals have scored a total of three offensive touchdowns through their first four games. That's the fewest of any team in the NFL. What is happening? What is happening? Uh, DeAndre Swift, he got in the end zone. He had himself an okay game. Alvin Kamara is in the – look, if you're in PPR, mm. you are celebrating the return of Alvin Kamara because he had 13 receptions. Disgusting. 13 receptions for 33 yards. That's impossible. And <laughs> Hold on, hold on. The fewest receiving yards by a player with 13-plus catches in a game ever. The previous record, Jason, 71 yards. <laughs> so it, <laughs> the previous low on 13 receptions was 71 yards. Kyle, that's such a good one. Oh, yes. And he was at 33 yeah, He said, watch yards. this. Two and a half yards of reception. Now, we talk about a, re a reception is worth, what, like two and a half times a uh -huh. carry? Yeah. I mean, two and a half yards per carry would be putrid. That would be like, man, you're getting stuffed every play. How could you possibly only have 33 yards? And I, we know the answer, and it's we're going to dunk on Derek yeah. Carr in a little bit. Uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, if you, do you not know that name? That's okay. He's a Denver Broncos running back. He's the one. Uh, him and P. Ryan picked up the, the workload after Javante left with an injury. We're highlighting the name right now because he was 7 for 72 Three receptions, thirty-two yards, and a receiving touchdown. And I mean, he is—he's undersized, but he has juice. He's also been. Um, his name has come out of Peyton's mouth almost every single time that they talk about the running back room. It, he, Sean Payton has, has brought his name up, and then he performs in his opportunity. I don't think he's going away. Yeah, so he will be – he'll be fun to talk about tomorrow. A.J. Brown, mm. 13 targets tonight for 175 and two. Whoo, brother, dominating. Stephon Diggs, we came through with a hat trick, everybody. Three tutties, six for 120 and three. He's a great player. Nico Collins, seven for 168 and two. He is the wide receiver, seven on the season. Nico – and and I know Tank Dell had a bad game, but saying these these Texans are Stroud, they are destroying the the analytics of wide receivers with rookie quarterbacks because Stroud is balling out. Nico Collins is ascending into looking like he's going to be like you know a true fantasy force. And he gets the Falcons next week. Yeah, sometimes. Nico Coll where do you, Nico Collins, Jason, is the wide receiver? What moving forward? Just off the top of your head, I, I think he'll probably be in my rankings around wide receiver sixteen. Most I was gonna say, weeks. is does he crack top fifteen? Uh, I don't think he cracks top fifteen. You've still got uh, different ways that it can go. There, there. Robert Woods is involved. Tank Dell has been involved. Um, you know, it's going to be he's, he's their big play guy. But at the same time, it's like sometimes in fantasy football, the managers that succeed the most on the season are the ones that buy in the quickest on something you see. If if you can identify some new change and move in quickly, like Achan, for instance, sure, uh, this was a player that I very much believed in uh, along the way. So when he had his breakout game last week, there was no question he was in my lineup. I wasn't going to say, "Oh, he's got to prove it again." Um, th this is, this is the situation with Stroud. He's legit. Stroud is for real, which means his wide receiving options will be fantasy relevant. You just got to buy in and don't move away from take Dell either. Yeah, I agree with that. Puka, 10 targets, nine. I mean, he needed overtime, but nine for 163 and a touchdown. He has, uh, the most re receptions through four games, uh, to start anyone's career in history. And it was like by nine. So he is. Yeah. Handling that record very, very well. Previous record was thirty. He is, is that at Bolden thirty nine. That was Bolden, and and I mean, he's I believe the wide receiver five right now. Yeah, probably Justin Jefferson. He's great, six for eighty five and two. He almost had another one. It was called back on a uh, an offensive penalty. Then Kirk Cousins threw a hundred yard pick six, and for his troubles of trying to chase down the receiver, Kirk, <laughs> Kirk was doing the right thing. 
and he got explosivoed. <laughs> yeah, um, if you haven't seen the play, it, it's, it's it's pretty a, fun. It's a, it's a delight. <laughs> uh, DJ Moore nine targets, eight for one thirty one and one. If Justin Fields is going to have a big passing day, it will go through DJ Moore. Michael Wilson mentioned it earlier, but seven targets. Seven for seventy six and two. That is a Cardinals rookie wide receiver, Michael Wilson. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. People. Who yeah, was yeah. Michael Wilson? Uh, Cardinals rookie wide receiver has been pretty good. Um, was the talk of training camp? Came out okay, and then they kind of got benched, and they now he's back in the starting rotation and looking fantastic. At the tight end position, Cole Komet seven for eighty five and two. He can do this in the right matchup, and then he will be a groundhog for some of the other ones. Yeah, the right matchup is Vance Joseph teams. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Like, yeah. Vance Joseph over the last several years, when he Man. was the Cardinals, you would just target the tight end against the yeah. Cardinals like crazy. Yes. His scheme yeah. does not guard the tight end at all. Uh, unfortunately, next week, that means, what, like Conklin? I don't know if you can trust it or not. Mandrews. There we go. Yeah, baby. Five for 80 and two. Only five targets. Don't necessarily love that part, but love the output and l like to see that he is healthy, ready to go. His The second touchdown was like that was some vintage Mark Andrews stuff. Kyle Pitts, uh, six for 95. No, no, I'm so sorry. That was Janu Smith. Same team. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. The, the, you tell me these were Desmond Ritter targets? Yes. So now you start having the conversation. Yep. This Janu Smith really here to rain on everyone's parade that we can just continue to dunk on Arthur Smith, continue to dunk on Desmond Ritter, saying, "You have well, why can't you get Kyle Pitts involved? Janu is the tight end 10 on the season. Is it a Kyle Pitts problem? I don't know. But more and more, if, like, if this continues, <sighs> you, you, he has more receptions. Fantasy players are going to have a problem. He has more receptions. He has more yards. He has more fantasy points. Um, just about the same targets. One fewer target on the season. It it just all it means is like Kyle Pitts should be on waivers. You're not playing Johnu Smith either, but you're not touching. Like don't do matchups. Don't do anything. Don't get cute. Dalton Schultz. He shows up here because he caught a touchdown, uh, which was thrown by. Yeah, it was. It was not Stroud. I can't remember who threw it. It was a trick play. That's that's what it takes to get Dalton <laughs> Schultz a touchdown these days. His quarterback is balling out, and he still can't get involved. Hmm. Jake Ferguson, Fergalicious. There it is. Seven targets, seven for 77. Oh, it was Devin Singletary. Thank you, Kyle. Jake Ferguson had a, like, 77 yards. That's a great game, and he didn't even get to finish, like, because the Cowboys handled business. He He's a legitimate option. He's not – this isn't – it's not going to turn into the doctor's numbers from last year because they're still playing other guys. Peyton Hendershot is hurt, so the schoon man had to step up. <laughs> the ridiculous things with the Cowboys' tight ends. What have we done? Uh, but Ferguson was was able to step up while Hendershot was out. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. All right. Not everyone had a great game. Pooped in his big boy pants. Kirk Cousins had a down game, just 12 of 19 for 139 and two. He did have the two interceptions as well. But, they won the game. But they, they won they the game. They got the first game. So just to make sure I'm reading the, the math correctly, uh -huh. Kirk Cousins, three phenomenal games. Yeah. Three losses. Uh -huh. One bad game, uh -huh. one win. Okay, that makes sense. Also, uh, update, I did see Charge talking to Minnesota Vikings fans. So the win, uh, not Kirk Cousins. <laughs> He was not responsible at all for the win, but he is responsible for all the losses. Uh, Tua, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't necessarily a bad game, 25 of 35 for 282 and a touchdown. He threw a pick. It was two but, rushing touchdowns that went a chance way instead yeah. of being passing touchdowns from Tua. You're certainly disappointed if you had him in your lineup, but that's going to happen sometimes with this team. Patrick Mahomes, 18 for 30, only 200 yards, a touchdown, two interceptions. And he a did bad one. Yes. Like, like, usually, whenever you see a Patrick Mahomes interception, it's like, oh, he hit the who's, receiver in the hands. Whose fault was that? And and the, the receiver popped it up. This was like a Jameis Winston long ball to the wrong team. What was going on? Who, which Jameis did get in the game and throw it. <laughs> That's right. He came in for one play <laughs> and then threw a pick. Oh, Jameis. Uh, okay, now it's discussion time. Joe Burrow, 20 of 30, 165 yards. <laughs> 
three carries for a yard against the Tennessee Titans, the team, one of the top teams that we target with our fantasy quarterbacks because they are a pass funnel. It's difficult to run on them. Historically been very easy to pass on them, and yet Burrow and company could not get anything going. Burrow was getting demolished back there, so I'm not saying it's all Joe Burrow's fault, but the Bengals, T. Higgins will be out. What do you do with Joe Burrow moving forward? Are we are we continuing to force him into the lineup? He gets to play Arizona and then Seattle. That that could help him get his no, momentum, get no, his no, mojo no. back. No, 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 no. You are no? not okay. you are not putting Joe Burrow in your lineup. You have to wait until he looks healthy. He is destroying it's not like like here's why I kept saying you start Justin Fields. Because when Justin Fields was sucking, he was scoring fifteen fantasy points. He was not just he wasn't making it to where you couldn't win matchups. Joe Burrow's fantasy points, 3.2, 8.2, 4.7 at the quarterback position. You can't have that in your lineup. And that's – now he loses T. Higgins. I know it's a – even if it's a good matchup against Arizona, you have to see that he looks right before you can put him in your lineup. It's, it's really bad. And when I say that the Bengals aren't making the playoffs, so you've got two winnable matchups here, then they're bye week. Good. Hopefully you get healthy. Coming out of that, uh -oh. you've got the 49ers – You've got the Buffalo Bills, and then two weeks later, the Ravens. I mean, it's 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 going to be tough sledding. I mean, they're already a three-loss team, and they haven't scored 20 points in three of their four games. They've scored three points in two of their four games. It's just it, it, it's, it's um, devastatingly bad. If they were to come out on the road against Arizona and lose, which is absolutely possible. I mean, Arizona at home just beat the Cowboys, who handed Bill Belichick his worst loss of his career this week. Um, if this version of Joe Burrow and T. higgins uh Bengals comes over and, and loses, you might see Burrow shut down for a while. Trevor Lawrence, 23 completed passes, 207 yards, one passing touchdown. He did give you 42 yards on the ground. So QB 15 certain, certainly could have gone worse, but that is very, very disappointing. So we're talking four total passing touchdowns in four games. That's the problem. Uh, I imagine uh, – wait. Oh, no, Ridley won't be on this list because he did catch a touchdown. But Calvin Ridley – so uh, let's do a Calvin Ridley discussion mm -hmm. then because it has been all Christian Kirk, like the, the past couple weeks here. Calvin Ridley – Caught the early touchdown. This was like at the very beginning of the game. Which did, did anyone watch any of the Toy Story stuff? I didn't. I meant I wanted to see it. It it was novel, and it's it's funny to see um, adults on the internet were reacting very negatively on a on a, a product that's created for <laughs> for small children. <laughs> really? Come on, people. <laughs> so, I mean, it, the tech is very interesting. It was pretty buggy, but I don't know. You know, it's fine. But the point being. Calvin Ridley, early touchdown, ends the game with two targets. Yeah, and, and 30 really, in a touchdown. if you go from week two on, um, he's not the target leader. It, like you said, it's it's Christian Kirk. I think it's Evan Ingram uh, after that. Like Cal yeah. Calvin Ridley has not been where you want him to be in the pecking order. Um, I, you know, he's... It's a, weird. A little bit banged up. I'm not moving away from him. Maybe that's okay. maybe that's um, that's that's kind of the big discussion. Pig headed but. and stubborn, but I uh, he's still talented. Um, thirty four percent target share, twenty percent, eighteen, seven. Yeah, like, this this last week was bad. I do <laughs> where wonder, we're going. We don't need roads. I do wonder um, if he was banged up. He got so hurt the the week prior. Yeah, multiple okay, times yeah, in fair. that game. Yes. Um, but you know, T TBD, they've got Buffalo in London this coming week. So it's not a great matchup. All right, here it is. Derek Carr, 23 completed passes for 127 yards. It was impossible to watch. It was, it, I don't think you have them all out yet. Yeah, no, at all. Like you, there's a lot more. There's 23 farts. <laughs> To get out, twenty three of uh, of thirty seven. It was infuriating yes. watching the Saints yes, it try was. to play offense. They couldn't do it. Why was Derek Carr in this game? I have to believe this is because of the shoulder. Is why he played 
totally differently yeah, oh, than I he's would, ever played in his career. I'm going to I'm going to side with yes. But like if that's all you can do is snap the ball and check it down. Snap the ball and check it down. If that's really all you can do, you should not be behind center. It was inferior. So like Chris Olave. Chris yeah. Olave managers really, really hurt, disappointed. It was a terrible game. And he had no chance. No chance. I mean, he Derek Carr would not look down the field. Derek Carr couldn't throw the ball down the field. And so, man, does that scare you for like this coming week in, at, at New England? Derek Carr's going to be the starter. Is his shoulder just magically healed? 0 0.4 air yards per completion. <laughs> the low, Z the what? 0 0.4 air yards per completion, the lowest number tracked by next gen stats in over a year. <sighs> nice. Uh, at the running back position, Tony Pollard. It was another weird game script. That's kind of the 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 struggle point for the Dallas Cowboys offensive pieces is that they just they just beat down the opponent, especially on the defensive side of the football. They're not going to beat down the San Francisco 49ers next week. You're not worried about Tony Pollard. He, no, no, no. He looks great. It was a disappointing output, but whatever. You don't. I don't care. I will say I'm I'm a little concerned about their his inefficiencies with the five zone like week one was great against the Giants but then I mean the last two weeks it's only two carries I mean you don't get a lot of opportunities inside the five but both this past week one carry for negative four yards the week against Arizona one for negative two their their red zone offense is kind of broken right now so that lowers your scoring opportunity Ramondre Stevenson don't worry, both him and Zeke showed up on this list despite the insider reports oh. that Ezekiel Elliott is going to, quote, start. see starter snaps. Yeah. It, a, it was nice to see 14 carries for Ramondre, only six to Zeke. Ramondre yeah. is still the guy. This was a very difficult matchup in Dallas on the road. He has another very difficult matchup next week against the New Orleans Saints, and then I will be trading for him. That's how I – view I, I don't mind that Raheem Mostert yeah two fumbles seven for nine on the ground got to move on from that one Miles Sanders uh I, another Miles Sanders is was he was struggling with the groin injury and then Chuba out snapped and we 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 were has we had some concern for him during the the show because a, look a, a groin strain is it's it's not nothing and clearly the Panthers agreed as Chuba was out there and Chuba looked better yeah, I, he's healthy. I would not have wanted to start Miles Sanders after getting downgraded on Thursday. You know, I was telling people to pick up Chuba. Obviously, if he's active, maybe it's difficult to bench him. But I would continue benching him next week. Uh, he's going to be on the road against Detroit. That's a bad matchup for running backs. Um, wait till he gets healthy. James Conner, he could not volume mm. himself into a good game on this one. 11 for 52 he against the 49ers. On a per-touch basis. <laughs> Those are great numbers, but... Joshua Dobbs was stealing a lot of the production. Jerome Ford, he did have six targets, and it was – I, he, it, man, it's so difficult to gauge are you happy or not yet by picking up Jerome Ford because it was the, the horrifically bad matchup in his first attempt, which he scored the two touchdowns, and then this a completely broken offense. He goes into the bye week. Watson should be ready to go for the next week, but then it's San Francisco. I don't know. It, just give give Jerome Ford a little bit of time. It is more of a timeshare than we were expected uh, with with Pierre Strong getting work and Kareem Hunt as well. At the wide receiver position, Chris Olave, eh, that was a Derek Carr problem. Jalen Waddell, only four for 46. Debo, this, I I know he was hurt, and they we weren't exactly even sure he was going to play, but no targets, three carries on the ground, six rushing yards. Didn't need him. Yeah, you yeah, the team I mean, the team did not need him. He was just he was a distraction out there opening things up. Brandon Ayuk had a ton of yardage. He had a great game. So just I'm moving I'm I'm are you making anything out of this? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. He was he was hurt. They didn't need him at all. Why why put the ball in his hands to re-aggravate the injury if you don't need him? Amari Cooper Nah, just yeah. chalk that up for the Cleveland Browns. But Elijah Moore should be highlighted for his one carry for negative 20 yards. Oh, yes. Was, <laughs> that play, man. In one of the most boneheaded plays that, like, it's so egregiously bad of, of him 
just continuing to run back, thinking he's going to be able to turn the field against NFL defenders. Like, this crap, maybe it works in college against a really inferior opponent. But he just kept going backwards. It was, it was, we were and, like, and what are you go, doing? Elijah, go down. No, I could go back even further. <laughs> so he had negative 20 yards on that one carry. I can't believe the team let him, didn't bench him yeah, that, it, for the it, next play. It was insane. It was like, it was like the clock had hit zero and you have no other choice. There is, this is the last play right, of the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the only thing you can do is just not go down. He was, the, you're going that way, Elijah. Our our end zone is that way. Yeah, it's it was spectacular. But again, Dorian Thompson Robinson, he's the rookie for the Cleveland Browns. It was just it was not happening. Mm -hmm. Mike Evans, he left with an injury. Also tougher matchup against Lattimore. It happens. Michael Pittman, this one was very disappointing considering I mean, Anthony Richardson had a fine day. It, the the tight ends did the work, including a jag uh, is Gigantor on this list? Come on, guys. How was Gigantor not being highlighted in the studs? You that, just highlighted him. That, it was only one catch, but it was a beast catch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, how many guys did he run over? Uh, how many guys are on the field? <laughs> 11? <laughs> uh, but anyway, so Michael Pittman, only one for 15. He had a two-point conversion to, you know, wash the skid marks out a little bit. George Pickens, three for 25. It's going to be up and the, down. Are the, you are you excited for Trubisky with him, or how um, do, how do you gauge that situation? I think it could be an upgrade. I don't think it's going to be a downgrade going from Pickett, um, but I, it's probably just neutral. I'm I am excited um, for George Pickens just in general. I think I think he'll be the number one read, and he's talented. This was a bad matchup, a bad game. the The Steelers got just dominated. Yes, it it was really surprising. Oh, yeah, the hype shirts. Yeah, That's, I know. I totally forgot about that. So if you missed this, uh, Anthony Richardson and Michael Pittman, they had T-shirts. There were matchy T-shirts. The poster of the movie Step Brothers, and they had put their faces on them because insinuating, did we just become best friends? And apparently, best friends don't throw catchable targets to each other. Yeah. I think when I declare some of my best friend, I give them good gifts. I give <laughs> Yes, I give them so many great presents. Jordan Addison. Oh, my god. I, I don't understand Where's, what. How? I, I don't understand how? what happened for the Vikings. Like, they they started with a pick six, and then they went on to win the game. They they ran But fewer, Hawkinson sucked. Like, Kirk Cousins sucked. Addison is only on the field in 11 personnel. They ran fewer 11 personnel snaps. Such a strange decision to us, but they won the game, so then they're going to pat themselves on the back. Jacoby Myers, it it uh, didn't uh, happen. It, look, Aiden O'Connell was the rookie who played for the Raiders. Jacoby did have a you huge... You talking about Farva? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, <laughs> he really, really wanted a leader of cola. And <laughs> Jacoby did have a huge catch that was called back on an OPI. They would have saved the day for him, but... The the, the fill-in rookie quarterbacks, it was not a great day for them. Tank Dell, not a great day. George Kittle, one target. Super disappointed. Debo had zero catches. George Kittle had one catch. But Christian McGoatfrey <laughs> had all of the yards. It was basically a two-man show. Uh, if they were yeah. passing the ball, it was down the field deep to a pretty much wide open Brandon Ayuk. And otherwise, it was just give the ball to Christian McCaffrey and let him do his work. The the um that's the issue with the San Francisco 49ers is that there is not a consolidation. There's four phenomenal, talented players on this roster, and you're not going to usually have more than two of them have a great game at the same time. T.J. Hawkinson also another one that was shocking to me. Of he only had two for 24, and. Just a matter of happenstance, I guess, you know, when you're trying to watch nine TVs and you see both of Hawkinson's good receptions, you're like, oh, no, Hawkinson's getting worked in. No, no. <laughs> what a weird day for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, also, I get, apparently it wasn't good enough for Brooks. Uh, Alexander Madison had himself another really strong game on the ground. Cam Akers was the backup. They, had, they said they were going to ride the hot hand. They gave Alexander Madison plenty of opportunity. I think he played like the whole 
the first two drives. Looked very competent again on the ground. Cam Akers will eat into the workload. Um, so how are you? How are you now? Uh, like you, you guys were not on the Madison side like I was. So how do you feel now about the situation? Two, not huge fantasy games because he didn't get a touchdown, but two very strong rushing performances. That looks like this is a this is a starting running back. He right just now. needed that motivation, man. Of he just, he needed Cam on the team to finally, ah. you know, uh, get up there. Five point six yards of carry. He he had a very nice game, uh, commanding market share leader in that backfield. It's all, it's only the first game for yes. Cam, so I'm not going to read too much into the splits yet. But it says you know you 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 could keep starting Alexander Madison until otherwise you know. I think that's probably good advice. Just start him until – don't bail. Like, like don't just – he's had two good games. Yeah. The, I, I think the Vikings will keep going to him, but there is a chance that he fumbles and and then it's done. And then it's the Cam Akers show. Dallas Goddard uh, – uh, This at is what concerning. Point, at what point I'm, do we downsize his pants? Because this guy has been – He's just – Let's stunk. see. Let's read the, the fantasy points so far for Dallas Goddard. Zero. That's a bad one. I hate when I have zero. Uh, 5.2, 6.6, and 3.5. Those are fantasy points. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's on a per week. I mean, that's just terrible. It's it, it, I don't know where you go because, I mean, I'd rather I, – well, I think I'd rather play Dallas Goddard than chasing some new hotness off the waiver wire, but it's like Fergalicious. He might, I would, I would he might much, still be on people's – Waiver wires. I'd much rather play Fergalicious. I would rather play Hunter Henry. Um, I think there are guys that started the year on waivers. They they were probably picked up, but they might have been picked up by the Dallas Goddard manager. And and at this point, I mean, we've got a month of not good utilization, and it's with a new offensive coordinator, and the team is undefeated. So it's not like it's you know it's this could just be the new norm. And Kyle Pitts is here. But he'll be here every week. Kyle Pitts doesn't <laughs> deserve to be here. Yeah, when, at what point do we downsize his pants? I think last year. I mean, <laughs> Kyle Pitts does not have big boy pants. Kyle Pitts should not be rostered. And uh, you move on. Atlanta, trade him. Do it. Do the right thing. <sighs> we made it through the show. Uh, does anybody have anything else that we missed? Any new? Any breaking news back there, Brooks? No, sir. No, we're doing all right. So that'll do it for today's show. Tomorrow, it is waiver time. We got some big decisions that we will have to make. A couple of interesting running back targets. But that'll do it for the Deucers, for Jay Riz, for Jason, for me. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.